Petrogem Inc. A series on mechanisms in geomechanics. This episode, Geomechanics Behind Fracturing Pressure Curves. Glad to have you with us again. As promised, without any further ado, we'll start exploring the details of pressure curve for pressurized fracturing tests. Ascending straight up. After injection started, the low permeability target interval is usually intact, with no fractures to let the injected fluid escape. At this condition, by continuing injection in the isolated volume of the well, the fluid will be compressed, and, as a result, pressure has to increase. The rate of pressure increase, which is the slope of the line AB, depends on different parameters, mainly the compressibility of fracturing fluid, and the rigidity of the container, which is the well, in here. This means, you can inject a larger volume of a more compressible fluid, in a more deformable container, and observe less increase in pressure. The rigidity of the container varies, based on, whether the well is cased or not, and, also, depending on, how the packers used for zone isolation along with the other tools, will deform in response to pressurization. This straight line might be affected by high permeability of the formation, pre-existing fractures, or fluid pathways related to the cement job. when it bends. The discussed straight line does not continue forever, and there comes a so-called leak-off point where this line bends. This is the time when induced fractures are starting to form. Although fractures are already initiated at this bending point, they should not be considered as maturely extended fractures. These initiated fractures are small, in both length and width, and they are not likely to propagate far, without being exposed to greater pressures. Note that, in the case of intact rock, with not initial fractures, leak-off pressure is usually greater than minimum in situ stress, and the reason is speculated to be, the stress concentration around the borehole. The uphill Initiating fractures, means there will be more room for the injected fluid to occupy. Having this extra room, fluid will not get as much pressurized as before, and the slope of the straight line, is reduced, starting from the leak-off point, until it gets to the, the climax of the curve. The Climax Having a climax, is necessary for creation of a trustworthy fracture. The pressure at the climax is called breakdown pressure. For a long time, definition of breakdown pressure, and its difference with fracture initiation pressure has been a source of debate, mainly due to the complex physics behind the problem. There are some less popular theories, that speculate that, the time of breakdown is when a fracture actually initiates. However, the commonly accepted theories in fracture mechanics, believe in the presence of the fractures prior to this time, these theories differentiate the status of the fracture before and after breakdown. According to these theories, breakdown is a point where the fracture moves from stable to unstable condition. They also, sensibly, argue that even the fluid entrance into the fracture and pressure distribution within the fracture are different in these two distinct states. Breakdown pressure has been observed to depend on fracturing fluid type and viscosity, injection rate, and borehole size. Efforts to simply calculate breakdown pressure from elastic models have not been really successful. Also, there have been some efforts in the industry, to use the recorded breakdown pressure in these elastic models, to estimate magnitudes of in-situ stresses. Many of these efforts, have also shown less success. losing control. At the breakdown point, the energy provided by pressurization, helps the fracture, to become mature enough, and grow unstably. 
This unstable fracture is not under control anymore and employs the previously stored energy, along with the currently injected one, to grow wider and farther. As a result of this extensive fracture propagation, the fracturing fluid has a lot of room to occupy and, therefore, it relaxes some of its high pressure and the fluid pressure drops substantially. There is another reason for pressure drop, the unevenly distributed pressure in the previous immature fracture is now redistributed much more uniformly in the current wide and long fracture. As we will see in the next section, like any instability, with a limited amount of energy, this one has to come to a stable state if given enough time. And that brings us to the end of the second part. We will continue our journey in the next one to see what happens after the fracture is created. Make sure you join us for this final part of this episode. Check out our different services at Petrogem.